beans, full bore. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thrill seekers, conversationalists, uh, if you get that, you get that. If not, don't worry about it. Welcome back to that dumpster fire life. I've got my spiffy shirt on today. Uh, you'd think I was out working, but I was uh, doing a little uh, real estate photography for my buddy. But we have something cool right back here behind me. Yeah, behind me. Ooh, shenanigans. New toys. New toys are coming to the workshop. Uh, this is a giant pile of mess in the back of the DF-1. Ignore the moving boxes, ignore the busted up fishing rod, ignore the... what's in the coffee can? Oh, I gotta give that to Donnie. Anyway, uh, yeah. 1946, Craftsman, drill press. You gotta find a way to get this heavy thing Gonna keep it clean. Don't wanna get flagged by the YouTube police. Let's see about getting that guy out of there. Helping me today, I have no one. But this guy right here, yeah, him. He's, uh, that's Magliner. I used that thing for hauling kegs for years when I used to run a keg route truck. Probably thousands of tons of beer have been on this thing. Mere seconds later, we're out of the Jeep. She actually sits a little higher now. To give you a little bit of an idea of the scale of this thing, for a bench top, she's kind of a monster. Uh, probably 33 inches tall from ground to the top of the cast iron housing. Um, that's proof of its age right there. Oh, focus. There you go. Two prong plug. And what does it say something on there? Bolton bold Bolden. Alright, that's obviously a replacement from some point along the way, but uh yeah. Doesn't have a modern third plug third prong grounding it kind of old school it's got a two bar unsprung crank whatever looking at the inside of it here it looks as if this had been used in a wood shop situation rather than a metal machine or fab shop setup that means uh, we would definitely need to figure out proper drive ratios. I have picked up some belts to uh, you know, try and play with that to try and bring the speed down a little bit because uh, you don't need to go a bajillion miles an hour to uh, drill a hole in some plate steel. That's cool. Check out how awesome stuff was when it was made God, 70 years ago. 73 years ago, 74 years ago, 1946 was 74 years ago. Dave can do math. Holy cow. I'm wondering if there's a return spring for the drive head on it because it just goes down. Let's try and get her inside. I'd like to get her cleaned up a little bit. The main sh the main uh, column here on the back that could probably use like a good like brake clean steel wool and then a coat with some light oil or some WD-40 to keep it from corroding and then you know we'll see if we can make her pretty we'll see how slow we can make her turn all right very cool hmm this thing is cumbersome and damn near impossible to balance on a hand truck I was thinking I could uh, snake the motor off the back of it real quick, but it's got crazy old, really old style square head bolts holding it to its drive plate. And then I noticed one of the two bolts that holds 
the sliding adjusters in. He's got his head sheared off of him. So, um, we're going to have to do this the hard, ugly way. All right, we're in the house. It's heavy. It's awkward. It's poorly balanced. <sighs> it needs to go down that flight of stairs. <gasps> No, not gonna do that. Hey, stupid. Dummy. Can you get it down the stairs? No. Didn't think so. What is that? What is that? Flappy ears. Oh, snuffing at me. What is that thing? What's that? What is that? Walks away. It's not food. Stairs to the basement. Oh, come on, focus up. Yeah, welcome back to the workshop. We haven't been down here in months. Well, at least, you haven't been down here in months. And it's still a mess. And that's still a video I may be producing over there. You know, we, we might get down to it. But we're here for something else. 1946 Craftsman. Uh, the number plate's down on the bottom there somewhere. I've also got the owner's manual for it. Original print. Uh, I'm going to guess this thing probably weighs about 150 to 175 pounds. And that's probably a one and a half to two horsepower motor on the back. You can see I already slid one of the pulleys off the back. I was just like, hey, is that guy just kind of keyed on there and sitting there or is it bolted down? Well, it's supposed to be bolted down. Uh, yep, right inside that little hole there. Can you see that dude? Yeah. He's got that Allen head set screw that lines up with that keyed edge on the shaft. Why is he facing? I got it. It's like I'm doing a distributor. I got 180 out. Yeah, drops right on. It actually locks it in place at that point. Not as tight as it should be, so we can actually set that down there a little bit. Uh, this one is set in nice and tight. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four ratios up front. Times four possible ratios on the back. Uh, so yeah, 16 speeds. Uh, and to be able to change between the speeds, there's our broken bolt, which holds tension on this guy right here, which allows that to slide back and forth. There's a matching bolt on the other side, which is not broken off. That lever should be the lock that allows you to adjust the head unit up and down on the mast. And then there's a similar function Similar function handled by this dude here, so you can set your work tray where you want that. Now, what I think I want to do, I want to mount this on a tabletop. Um, I think I want it up here, but I want it to face off the end that way so that you can approach it like this. I can bolt it down on that center plank because, as you can see, I am a master carpenter and these things don't always line up the way we want. Why I prefer mechanical things to wooden things. But it's a super thick base. You could drive trucks on these workbench tabletops that I built down here. and it, it wouldn't make a difference. They're not going to hurt them. But we can bolt it down to this. Uh, I have a power drop right here. I do need to replace this light fixture, or at a minimum, it's ballast. Because uh, I turned it on a couple months ago and it let out the magic smoke, so it's been unplugged. And it from this side with slightly better light, I'm thinking I might like to get one of those sort of crane arm, swivelly, uh, like desk lamps or a jeweler's lamp even would be cool. I could clamp that up on that janky piece of 2x4 that a previous owner had attached to the house. And uh, yeah, then I could have 
some good light right here on the workspace for that guy. All right, guys, almost forgot. Today's a special day. We're going to have our first in the shop guest. They're going to be working with us. They're going to be kicking back with us. They're going to be learning with us. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to my very good friend who I've known for a very long time. It's my buddy Evan. Hey, buddy. High fives. Yeah, once in a while, I like to uh, hang out with my buddy Evan Williams. Some people like to hang out with Jack Daniels. I've heard it said that if you know Jack well enough, you call him John. Tell me what movie that is down in the uh, comments down below. Maybe there's a sticker or something I can send you if you get it right. But uh, we're going to have a sip of this. Yes, I drink my bourbon with ice cubes. Damn! I like it that way. There's something about this setup right here that's nice. Working out the idea on getting him up there still. When I try and move this thing, and I think about the fact that I've got a 40-inch table height, I'm reminded that youth is fleeting. There was a point when I was 18 that I once deadlifted more than 700 pounds in a gym setting, and I used to be able to pretty routinely, you know, sort of deadlift the back end of my VW that I had in my early 20s. These days, not so much. Mmm! She thick! Yeah! That only hurt a little bit. Slow. Careful. Careful, watch the back, you know. Uh, did end up using the edge of my little cart here as a pit stop to reposition myself. That worked out well. Thanks, Harbor Freight. That stayed in one piece. Let's find a cord that I can use to connect this up to power over there because, well, reasons. I've looked up pictures of these things online and absolutely none of them had a grinding stone mounted on the bottom end of the motor. I guarantee you that's something that someone just bubbled right up onto there. So you can actually see, hey, here's proof. Hey, why is that tape here? Oh yeah, someone bubbled it. That goes over the top this way. And then we can get ourselves an extension cord to run into the wall there. Sorry for the lighting quality, guys. I just keep looking at this and cringing, but we'll work with what we've got. Uh, so, all right. There's the crank that moves your chuck up and down. There should be either a return spring or a combination return string, spring. Dave can talk. Uh, a return spring and depth gauge which should have a little knurled nut you could screw up and down to adjust how far, how much travel you can give this guy. But, no dice. Hey Evan, um, why didn't you help me get that thing up on the counter? I'm just kind of like hanging over here chilling. Just hanging out. Hmm, I don't get it. Hmm. You gotta make that sound when you take a sip off camera to make sure people know you're enjoying something. For those who don't know, Craftsman products like this guy, they used to be a Sears brand. Sears never actually made anything even though they owned a name and they sold a product and um, yeah, they usually backed up a warranty on things. Every Sears product has a number tag of some sort with, you know, three or four digits, a dot, some more digits, maybe some letters, whatever. That's their catalog number. In some cases, I've been told that you can, to this day, still get in touch with some Sears tool centers and or things like that, suppliers, and get this number out and get parts for equipment. Okay. So, this guy in the dark, that three quarter inch bolt, that pinches the collar around the mast. And, yeah, she moves well enough. We can do some working with that. Now we've got a much clearer shot of everything. And, okay, so we've got our main work table here. 
you can fasten down clamps, you can bolt things to it, you've got all these holes and sliding things for fixtures, so you can hold stuff in place safely and don't have to like try and hold onto it and then watch it get ripped out of your hand and then your knuckles are flayed everywhere. But even better, because this is a tabletop version and not a floor version, sometimes you need to drill something a little bigger. <clears throat> and um, yeah, you've got the same working surface features on this bottom plate. Plus, bolt hole there, bolt hole there, camera work Dave, and another matching one on the other side. That means I can bolt this sucker down to the bench and not have to worry about, you know, knocking it over on myself and dying a grisly death alone in my basement. All right, Sears data tag. Yeah, most of the actual data long since gone. Um, it's kind of like having an embossed data plate on a military vehicle. But, like I said, let's see what we got. 103.23640. That is a model number, a production run, a catalog number, and you can search for parts online by using that number to get a parts catalog that has every single nut and bolt and gear and everything on this machine. While we are here working on this, I'm going to do something horrible. I have mineral oil it's for sewing machines, power tools, fans, washing machine motors, and other household uses. Lubricates, cleans, prevents rust. Sewing machine oil is frequently called three-in-one oil. It's mineral oil. You can use it on your pew-pews. Alright, so we all know and understand that this big girl, because she's thick, she is um, made by Sears. <gasps> oh my god. That's Montgomery Ward. Monkey Ward! Monkey Ward! Will they reject each other? Will they, limit, will they live in harmony? Sears did outlive Montgomery Ward, but we'll see. Seriously, I'm going to use this to uh, get a little lube going in here and wipe down this guy because, yeah, he's a little scungy. Okay, so I don't know if you can tell or not, but look how much that cleaned up. And I was able to get this lined up so that we're much further up that way. That way we can still get to down here if we want to bolt this thing down in the near, very near future. Uh, that big bolt there, that should be what actually clamps the mast into the base. So if you really wanted to, you could adapt this with a big mast to a floor pedestal, I suppose. Look at this. That, friends, is an angle finder. So, if you need to drill something at a... 90 degree angle, you tighten it down at 90. If you need to drill something at a 45 degree angle, co cocked to the right, you can tip this table by way of, where is it? Ah, here it is. Where'd it go? That guy, that little bolt pin thing there, or is this a bolt that's broken off? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Can't tell if that's a... No, it's this bolt. Duh. Hey, Dave. That, I think, is a safety bolt that locks it at 90 degrees. All right. I'm a smart guy. Yeah. I, I've worked with shop tools before. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyway, that's your pin that locks it in place. I think we can drift that out. And then loosening this guy down here allows us to tip the bed left or right. Left or right. Right, so I'm running out of batteries and my friend Evan is almost gone, ready to leave for the night. So what I've gone and done, I took a little trip over to the guitar amp pile and I found this little guy. Not exactly the way I want to have it set up, but for our purposes today, this will do the job. Torch on. Hey, that's a little better. I really need to get a light overhead. This is why I thought of having the one, you know, up overhead. 
don't know what this knob does yet, but it somehow has something to do with this function, I'm sure, as does this. And that is our up-down swivel. Yeah. And all the way back here, this guy, that is our power switch. No safeties, no interlocks, no keys. <sighs> that guy, no ground, so. All right, are we gonna die? Ho ho, she's quiet. She started. The capacitors seem to be good. All right. I cannot hate this. No bearings rattling. It's not running too fast. I'm willing to bet I can get this down to a couple hundred RPM total. I wonder if it'll grind anything. Let me see if we can find something to grind. Okay. Old Jeep brake shields. No one ever runs these. Hey, let's find out, huh? Ready? She grinds. Yep. Now she makes rumbling noises. But yeah, I can now cover my basement in metal filings. <laughs> All right, now I turn it off. Hit the toggle switch. Completely intuitive. Up is off, down is on. It's kind of like when you wire your house wrong because you only halfway learned how to do it. All right, ignore the mess. Yes, I know I have garbage and crap all over the place, and for whatever reason, the camera makes it look worse. But, we got her in the house. We got her uh, down the stairs. We got her on the bench. We got her to run. Maybe I'll get her to drill something tonight, or maybe I'll work on that tomorrow night. Maybe that'll be a later portion of the video. It'll all be one episode, don't worry. It'll all be one episode, but... You know, it's getting late in the evening, it's, you know, past dinner time, and, uh, I gotta work in the morning, and do laundry, and slap the hogs, and all that homework. Oh man, so much.